Today, we have some fascinating insights into the recent success of Huawei's flagship, the Mate 60 Pro. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for the latest updates on tech news. Now, let's dive into it. So, they have Huawei's Mate 60 Pro has been making waves in China, and one of the main reasons behind its success is the revolutionary Kirin 9000's chipset. But why has this particular chipset garnered so much attention? Well, buckle up, because it's a story involving bans, restrictions, and some groundbreaking tech. As many of you know, Huawei's faced a ban in the United States, preventing them from using any American technology. This ban left Huawei's in a tight spot, especially when it came to developing advanced chipsets like the Kirin 9000s. The technology required for such a powerful chipset was seemingly only available in the US. Now, you might be wondering, how did Huawei's manage to pull this off despite the ban? Well, here's the scoop. According to a recent report from Bloomberg, Huawei's collaborated with SMIC, a chip-making company, to utilize technology from American companies, specifically California's Applied Materials Incorporation and LAM Research Corp. These companies played a crucial role in developing the advanced 7 in chipset for Huawei's even before the ban. The interesting part is that Huawei's and SMIC obtained the American machinery legally before the sanctions were imposed. Now, this sheds light on the complexity of the situation and raises questions about the future of Huawei's chipset production. But wait, there's more. Huawei's is not stopping at the Mate 60 Pro. They're planning to use the same technology in their upcoming smartphone, the Huawei's P70 series. The big question on everyone's mind is, how many chipsets can Huawei's produce using this machinery? Can they push the limits and develop even more advanced chipsets, like 5M, with the same American technology? Unfortunately, we don't have all the answers yet, but we will have more insights in the coming days. So well, there you have it. The Huawei's Mate 60 Pro's chipset is a product of American technology obtained legally before the ban. What are your thoughts on this revelation? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, the tech story continues and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. As we all know, the Samsung Galaxy A55 5G is releasing, so let's talk about it. If you have already watched this video, you can skip this part. The much-anticipated Galaxy A55 is on the horizon, and we have got all the details you need. Samsung's Galaxy A50 series has been a standout in the smartphone market, particularly for its impressive features at an attractive price point. Following the success of the Galaxy A54, Samsung is gearing up for the release of its successor, the Galaxy A55. Let's delve into everything we currently know about this eagerly awaited device. Going by historical patterns, Samsung typically unveils its Galaxy A series phones towards the end of the first quarter, so we can anticipate the Galaxy F55 to hit the stage around March 2024, following the release schedule of its predecessors. Shifting gears to variance in pricing, Bluetooth side data hints at three Galaxy A55 models, SM A 556B, SM A 556E, and SM A 556E underscore DS. The SM A 556B seems tailored for Europe, while the others may target Asian markets. While exact pricing details are scarce if we consider past generations, the Galaxy A54 at £449 slash $449, the Galaxy A53 at £399 slash $449, and the Galaxy A52 at £399 slash $499. It's reasonable to expect the Galaxy A55 to stay below the £500 slash $500 mark. Design. Leaped renders showcase the Galaxy A55 in three captivating colors. Awesome ice blue, awesome lilac, and awesome navy. Inspired by the A54, it features the key island design with a subtly raised frame around the power and volume keys, confirming a sleep metal build. The phone has rounded corners, a protruding rear camera array, and a flat display with a noticeable bezel and a punch hole for the selfie camera. Expected dimensions, 161.1 x 77.3. 8.2 millimeters, 6.3 x 3.0, 0.32 inches display. Now, turning our attention to the display. While exact details on the Galaxy A55's display specs remain uncertain, if Samsung continues with the A54's display, users can expect satisfaction. Speculations point towards a 6.5 inch flat display featuring a centered Infinity O front camera. Anticipated specifications include full HD plus resolution and a refresh rate of up to 120 Hz. Given the A54's impressive display, any enhancements in this area will surely elevate the overall user experience. Performance. Now, let's talk about performance. The Galaxy A55 continues the series evolution 
Moving from the criticized Exynos 1280 to the improved Exynos 1380 in the A54. Now it's rumored to feature the latest Exynos 1480, a promising upgrade. According to Geekbench 6 results, this new soak is expected to be paired with an unconventional GPU choice, the Eclipse 530 based on AMD's RDNA2 architecture. While the CPU improvements may not be groundbreaking, the shift in GPU could potentially enable the A55 to support ray tracing in games, although this feature is yet to be confirmed. The A55 prototype scored 1127 in the single-core test and 3090 in the multi-core test, surpassing the A54 by a slight margin. The device is expected to retain 8GB of RAM, maintaining a balance between performance and efficiency. Cameras. Shifting our focus to the camera setup, rumors suggest that the Galaxy A55 might not bring significant changes in this department. The Galaxy Club report suggests no major changes, but that's not necessarily bad news. The A54 delivered impressive photos for its price. While the rear camera setup seems consistent, unfortunately, there's no news on any front camera updates. If the leaks are accurate, the Galaxy A55 might continue to use the same 32 megapixel front camera sensor as its predecessor, the Galaxy A54. While the A54's front camera delivers decent performance, some users may have hoped for an upgrade given the iterative nature of smartphone releases. Battery and charging. Now onto the Galaxy A55's battery and charging. TUV Rhineland certification reveals 25 LU fast charging with 9V and 2.55 as support. The 3C certification reinforces Samsung's dedication to fast charging in mid-range phones. While exact battery details are limited, we anticipate reliable 5,000 mAh cell for extended usage. Network and connectivity. Moving on to network and connectivity, the Bluetooth SIG certification reveals that the Galaxy F55 will sport Bluetooth 5.3, matching the capabilities of its predecessor, the A54. Consistent connectivity ensures a smooth user experience, especially with wireless accessories. Software. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about the software. The Galaxy F55 is gearing up for launch with Android 14 and Samsung's One UI 6, promising a seamless and user-friendly experience. This combo suggests exciting enhancements to Samsung's ecosystem. Plus, users can anticipate robust software support with the possibility of receiving four major Android updates throughout the device's lifespan. Stay tuned for those latest Android advancements.